Okay, everyone, we're going to go ahead and get started. So a little housekeeping thing. Uh, my name is Jen, support agent Jen. If you've uh, sent us in a ticket or anything, you're probably uh, probably heard from me before. Um, this is going to be the first of our series of training. So we're going to start this one as a walkthrough of the functionality part one. Um, and then we've got some other series trainings lined up later this year. So we're going to go more in depth with what you can do, how to do it, all that good stuff. Let's see, I'm showing it can hear my mic. Is there anybody else that can't hear me? Do you have your speakers on? Okay, it sounds like we might have gotten the audio issues figured out. If you guys um, have any questions, feel free to send them over in the chat. Um, we're, I'm going to be going through after, if I can't get to everybody's questions, um, I'm going to go through after and grab any questions I wasn't able to answer and shoot you out an email with your answer before the end of the day. So if it's something that um, I'm missing in the chat, because it can go pretty quickly during the trainings, um, shoot it over when you send the chat in. You can select to send to the presenter and shoot it over to me with your email address. So I will get that over to you. After the training is all set today, I'm also going to send everybody that attended an email with the link to watch the videos. So any of the things that you and you attend, we're going to be able to view those videos at any time later on. Are there any other questions about the kind of the series of the trainings before we get started? Okay, let's go ahead and jump in. So we're going to talk about Social Booth first. That's our biggest one, so it's got the most features, so we figured that's where we would go ahead and get started. We're going to talk about your social media options. So one of the big things that we've been hearing from everybody is that they want to be able to share, to get it on social media. Um, it gets your name out there, your link, your, your samples, you know, out there, so you can touch more people that way. So we have a few built-in options for you. We've got email, where you can email um, the photo directly to the guest. Client Facebook, which allows all of your um, photos to be uploaded to one Facebook page. We've got user Facebook, which allows all of the guests at the event to upload to their individual page. Um, client Twitter, which is going to allow all the photos to go to one Twitter account. One thing to note with the client Twitter is if somebody is following the company name, they may get a notification for every photo that's posted. So it was something that we were asked for, but we do want to let you know that that can get annoying to your, your big followers. You can also do user Twitter, which will allow the guest at the event to upload to their Twitter account. You can do SMS and MMS. So the SMS is going to send a link to the photo and your MMS is going to send the actual photo as well as a link to the photo. We have SmugMug for you. Um, and with SmugMug, you'll be able to upload all of the photos to a specific SmugMug album. And the FTP, which will allow you to upload to your own site. So some users will set this up for immediate uploading of the event photos. Or you could use it if you have a corporate client that wants all of the photos right then and there. You can do it that way too. One of the additional things we have built in is not everything is able to work without internet. So for example, um, user Facebook or user Twitter, you can't use without internet because we can't store the passwords. So we use kind of Facebook's integration and they're logging right into Facebook. So if you don't have internet, you can't do that and you can't get that permission. So we have it set up so that it will automatically um, pull the buttons if you lose internet. So if you have user Twitter and user Facebook enabled, what will happen is those buttons will actually automatically remove if you lose internet. And then if you get internet back, they'll pop back in for you. So that's one of the reasons why you can't move those social media buttons is because it's hard programmed in to auto adjust for you. 
Um, do you guys have any questions on the social sharing side of things? Okay, and I know I could talk a little fast, so if I am getting a little overwhelming and, and excited and really fast, feel free to shoot me a note that says, hey, lady, slow down a little bit. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. So we're going to move into animated GIFs. Now, I know it's the GIF, GIF thing, and I'm, I go with GIF, and that's what we're going to use. So <laughs> what the animated GIF is going to do is it's going to take the individual photos from each session and um, play them in a sequence. So it's going to mi mimic that animation. So we have some more of our advanced features on the screen right now. So let's go into kind of an, ex an example of a basic one. So what this is going to do, um, you can see at the end of the sequence, the guest is going to have the ability to select which version they want. So on the left, we have what would be your printed, pr your printed one, and on the right is going to be that animation. So um, the print is still going to print if you have your automatic print set up. Um, they're still going to get that one. They can choose to... You know, if you've got that social media, that email, they can email themselves the kind of the print, that still version, or the animated version. From here, the guest could select either one, and it's going to bring up, if you've got filters on your photos, if they select the still filter, the still photo, it's going to pull in that filter screen where they can choose their filters. Um, if they choose the animated version, it's just going to go to those social sharing options. Um, with the animation, you can't really print that, so you're going to notice that the print button is going to be missing on that piece. So we're going to go ahead and move on to our animated backgrounds. So this one is utilizing green screen, where we have, uh, we utilize two of the frames for the print background on the left, but on the right side, we've got that animated background. So I know you're looking at it, you're like, man, that's really cool. <laughs> and it is, right? Um, the thing with the animated GIFs is it's all pure profit if you upsell this. So you could charge $100, $150, $300, and because there's no extra work on your end except for a couple of little checkboxes, this is just a pure profit piece of, pro you know, piece of, you know. Um, the animated background is only for green screen, that's correct. You can also do an animated overlay, which you don't need green screen for. If we go back a couple of slides, you can see this snow one. That would be the animated overlay. So because that one's on top of the photo, you don't need green screen. But with the animated background, it's actually going to remove that background that you have for the prints and put in your animation. Did that help? OK, great. So I know you're like, well, that's really cool, but how is it done? So, yep, the globe, if we go back a little bit, the globe is the overlay. Um, and then we've got this background set up. So this Merry Christmas part is the background. And then we've got the globe as the overlay, which is creating the animation. So in this example here, we have a background, we have the static overlay, and then we have the animated overlay. That one's one of my favorites, too. I love that one. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about how it's done. So for the background with the dance screen, we actually went out to Video Hive and found a video that we like. This one actually um, is set up so that you once you buy it, it's eight dollars. Once you buy it, it spits out the multiple JPEGs. So what you need in order to make this work, or I'm sorry, PNGs. Ignore ignore the JPEGs. It's PNGs. Um, so we've got about twenty different PNGs that are going to create that animation. So in a four shot sequence, each photo would have five of these backgrounds that are running behind it. So for the first photo, you would have these first five backgrounds that are going to play behind it. For the next photo, you're going to have the next five backgrounds that are going to run through it and play behind it. 
So if you were doing one shot, you would have all 20 behind it. Does that make sense for everybody? I know that one can be a little weird to picture. Okay, great. You guys are going to spoil me. Mary, we got that one on Video Hive, but you can either do that or there's services out there that if you have a video that you like, it can break it down into the individual frames and then you can just pull out which ones you want. Okay, so now, and you do have, um, while I'm thinking of it, you do have these dance versions in the trial software. So whenever, if you've purchased it, you've got it, if you've got the trial, it's in there. Um, you just go into the assets folder and then gift backgrounds and dance. So if you want to play, you can use those. I know some folks are trading them on the Facebook group as well. So if they've got some cool ones, they put them out there for users. So you might ask out there as well. Remind me at the end, and I'll grab you the link for the Facebook group. Okay, so now we have our animated backgrounds. We've got the PNGs that we need. So what do we need to do in the software, right? Um, you're going to navigate over to your animated GIF tab. And then from there, all you have to do is enable the animated GIFs, enable the animated background, and then select what folder is hosting those um, files, so those um, PNG files. You're just going to select that folder, and that's all that you need to do. There's the link for the Facebook group while I've grabbed it. Um, so you're just going to select the actual folder itself, and then that's going to tell the software where to pull those files from and what it's going to put behind it. So then at the end of the day, you get something like this. So this one's only got the two photos. So with our 20 frames that we have, there's 10 behind each of the photos. Pretty cool, right? One thing to keep in mind with these is it is going to take a little bit of extra processing power. So it's got to, it's going to put your green screen backgrounds behind the photos. And then it's going to remove those again and put the animations behind the animated GIF. So there is a little bit of extra processing there. So if you're on a computer that's already struggling, it probably is going to take a little bit of time. Yep, you can, you can have one if you want. Um, I'm sorry, you guys, there was a question of how many PNG files must be in the folder. So you can have as many as you want. We've had people that have done it with two behind each of the photos, so two total. Um, we've had people that have done 80. So it's really just dependent on what it is that you're looking to create. I recommend three or four per photo. You also want to make sure, this one is 20. You also want to make sure that um, it's easily divisible by how many photos you have. So we have 20 in here for a four photo shot. It would be five per photo. If you have, say, 21 in there, the transitions are going to look a little funny because it's going to try and split when the photo changes and when the background changes. So you just want to make sure that it's easily divisible by the number of photos that you have in there. Did you guys have any other questions on the animated GIFs or the animated backgrounds while we're here? Chris, for the animated overlays, it's going to work exactly the same way. So instead of selecting animated backgrounds here, you would select the animated overlay, and then you're going to add the select the animation frames, just that folder again. Yep, so you're going to do different file names. So I usually go with 01, 02, 03, and then that way you can make sure that they're going to appear in the order that you want them to. Let's see. Yep, for the PNGs, it's 600 by 400. For the animated GIF, sorry. 
and then your um, backgrounds or overlays or you know your static overlays it's going to be all 600 by 100. Chris you are you looking to do both overlays both animated overlays and animated backgrounds? You can only do one or the other per event. Ronnie, we're not going to do most of the how-to right now, so what this is going to be kind of an intro to the functionality, and then we're going to have different, more specific training in step-by-step -step on how to do everything. The animated overlays do work without green screen. I see a couple people that are looking for green screen background recommendations. The Facebook group would probably be a great a great place to ask. The snow globe is not something that we have available right now. It was something that we put together for the example. Pull the animated backgrounds do take some time to generate. Like I said, um, it's got to pull that background again and then create it. So it is going to take a little bit. We found um, smaller files, so if your photo resolution, if you kick that down a little bit, it can be a little quicker. Anything else all around the, the animated backgrounds, the animated overlays, and the animated GIFs? Yep, we're going to verse mode next. I just want to make sure that we're looking at the same thing. Somebody said with the overlay, it's not printed right. So the animations are going to be for the animated GIF, which is not printed. If you have just a static overlay on a photo, that would print. Yes, so within your event folder, so you have your um, event folders that you get. Instead of going right into the customize folder, you would be able to go into um, the GIF folder. So they'll all be saved right in this GIF folder for you. David, we're going to go more over green screen and how to kind of get rid of that stuff in the green screen training. Okay, so let's move on to our burst mode gifts. So these are the this was a feature that a lot of people were asking for. So what it's going to do is it's going to take the live view, what the camera is watching, and it's going to break it down into photos. So you can have the static overlay that you see, the photo booth solutions overlay. It does not work with animated overlays or animated backgrounds right now. So this is great to be used for stuff with action. So somebody jumping or swinging a bat or something like that. Um, whereas you can't just, you can't get those four photos quick enough in a traditional booth atmosphere for action shots. So that's why this came in. Uh, how many shots in burst mode? That's a good question. I want to say it's about six, but don't quote me on that. So did you guys have any other questions on kind of the functionality of the burst mode gift?
That's correct, Larry. So it's looking at it's taking that live view and it's going to actually break it down into individual frames. It's not going to give you like physical print shots. This would be um, just kind of your individual setting. It would be an animated GIF booth only. So you could also set it up as kind of one of the multi event selections. So that way they could choose between the two settings, but that would be kind of more advanced programming than just default what's built in. About two or three seconds, Chris, for the for these six shots. First mode does not allow for a green screen. Yep, when the counter hits one, it's when it'll start recording. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on to contest mode. Mike gave us a great picture for this one. I love it. Oh, so contest mode is going to give each chance, each guest a chance to win. So when you think of this originally, a lot of people think one in every 10 photos is going to win if I set it for 10%. The way that it's actually going to work and the way that I like to think about it is more of a random number selector than one in 10. So you can set the percentage. But it's going to be, say, if this random no number generator hits pulls 1 through 10, it's a winner. If it pulls anything else, it's, it's not a winner. Um, so that gives me a little bit, it makes more sense in my head than every 1 in 10 because it's not going to be exact like that. So every photo has a chance to win. You could get three right in a row. You could go an hour without one. It's completely random. So when would you use this? That's when everybody kind of... Um, is like, well, that's really cool, but when would I ever use it? So you could do it if you're working at like a bar or a stadium where they want to give away free appetizer or at a bridal show where you have giveaways. So um, if you've got to give away something to be in that bridal show, they could win that way where they have to take a picture in your booth. It's getting people in your booth. It's getting people to your, to your station. Um, you could also work with the show's producers for their giveaways, which then gives you kind of a premium spot. It gives you, you know, at least more people in your booth than would than would possibly come there normally. Um, we've also, instead of thinking of it as a winning template, you could think of it as a different template as well. So instead of winning, let's say we set it for sponsorship levels at a nonprofit event. So my $500 sponsor, um, their logo will appear on 10% of the photos, and then my $5,000 sponsor will get the other 90%. So just to give you a few ideas, we're going to go through how to set it up, what you need to know in just a minute, but I just wanted to give you some ideas of when you could use it and how you could use it before we really got into that, because it's very easy to be like, Psh, I'm never going to use that, and then when you really start thinking about it, there's a lot of places where you could, where you could use it, and it would be really cool and a differentiator for you. So what am I doing, right? How am I setting this up? So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to create your two templates. So you've got your one traditional print template, which is going to be this one here on the left. We kind of went boring on this one. It's just a shot. It's got no overlay or anything. Then we've also created a winning template. So you're going to want to create them both. You're going to want to save them both in this template tab. But then you want just this normal, I want this one to print the majority of the time. You're going to leave that selected in your templates tab. So does that make sense to everybody, the two separate templates that you're creating? Okay, cool. So then what we're going to do is we're going to move over to the extras tab. And this is where contest mode is hosted. So we're going to want to select you know, check the box and tell it that we want to use it. Then we're going to select this preset. It's going to be looking for your winning template file. So this is the one that we want to print when somebody wins. So we created that in the template tab and we saved it. So we're just selecting that here. 
Then you're going to set your probability, and you can use decimals here. So if you want it to be like 0.1%, you can do that. And then you can set the max number of wins. So let's say you only have 10 things to give away at your bridal show or something like that. You can set it up so that only 10 people can win, and then it shuts this down. So one thing to keep in mind with that is if you win while you're testing, you'll want to go back in and reset that or else uh, it takes one. Is anybody else having any issues with my sound? Okay, I kicked it up a little bit in my settings. Okay, so that's what we're going to do to set it up. We set our max number of wins as one. Um, I really didn't want anyone to win on this, so I set it as 0% winning. But you would do, you know, 10% or 5% or something there. Um, and then we selected our winning template. So does anybody have any questions on this tab of the contest mode set up? Okay, so then once your guest gets in there, they take all their photos and they're a winner, they'll know right away. So we have it set up on the filter tab. So this is the first one for this event that's going to pop up right after they're done with their photos. So you can see this one was my losing template, this one was my winning template. So they knew right away, hey, I'm a winner, I might want to print this, you know, that type of stuff. So they know right away, which is pretty cool. Did you guys have any questions on contest mode before we move to our next topic? So to select the templates, you're what I'm going to call the losing template, you're going to leave selected in the template tab. And then your winning template, you're going to select here in the contest mode setup under the extras tab. I see a few more people typing, so we're going to wait just a few seconds to make sure I don't skip any questions. That's correct. So only one of them prints out per session. So you're either a winner or a loser. We are all winners. <laughs> Everybody gets a trophy. Uh, so while we were on the winning tab, I thought it was a great time to talk about filters. So that's what we're going to move into next. <laughs> you are right on the money, Gerald. Um, so we're going to talk about the filters. So we have basic and advanced filters built in for you. So these six, the top three is going to be your color, your black and white, and your sepia. And those are always selectable. You can't adjust them. The bottom three that you see here are called our vintage filters. So these you can create, replace if you want. Um, all they are are created in Photoshop. There's a little bit of gradient on the side, and then it's semi-transparent. And what that's going to do is just lay over the photo, and it's going to give it kind of that vintage look. So if you wanted to create something that had a logo built in or something like that, you're more than welcome to. Um, they are in the Assets folder, so all you have to do is replace them in that Assets folder. Does everybody know what I mean when I say the Assets folder? So if you go actually into the program files, we have this folder um, called Assets. Let me give you all that link or that path. So within here is going to be most of the built-in templates that you see. In the filters, you can see we have our three built-in templates, or our three built-in filters, sorry. So if you wanted to replace them, just name them the same thing, plop them in this folder, and it'll know to, to use yours instead. Okay, so that is the basic filters, those kind of quick and easy ones. 
Let's talk a little bit about our advanced filters. So these are built in for you as well. They're just checkboxes that I'll show you in a little bit. Um, these are kind of the fun ones. You can see we've got our light bright where it looks like you did the actual like pegs. Um, we've got magazine, we've got kind of night vision, thermo, sketch, that type of stuff. So these are all built in for you. These do take quite a bit of processing power. I'm just going to lay that out up front. So these are going to kind of tax your computer again if you're um, using a, a computer that's already struggling. Probably not a good way to go. Um, you know, it's definitely going to take some work for that computer to, to be able to do that. Okay, so let's move right into some samples. So we've got, here's one that Mike created when he was just playing. Um, this one is kind of that sketch look. We've got that night vision here, and you can see that we used an overlay to kind of create the text to go for the, the look that the client was looking for with that one. We've got this one, which kind of changes them all different colors. So with these, you can see um, you would need to just select which ones you would like to use on the filter tab. You can only have six total enabled. So that's standard, that's advanced, that's custom filters. Um, so you can only have the six because that's going to be what shows up on the screen. So if you are using a lot of advanced filters, please keep in mind that it has to adjust four photos for each one of them. So if you have all six advanced filters selected, that's really going to slow down your, your processing time because it does have to individually adjust each one of them. Um, we also have built in, you can see, oh, hang on, let me go back for one second. We've got this only allow one filter to be printed per session. So with that, what you can do um, is allow it so that once the filter is selected, they can't go back and select more. So we've found with a lot of kids' events especially, they would pick a filter and print it and then hit back and pick a filter and print it and then hit back. and what it was doing was really slowing down how many people could use the booth. So we built that in so that way once they pick that filter, they're done. They can, they can still share it, but it's, they just can't get back to that filter screen. So here also you can do your own custom filters. So this is going to be, um, what it's going to do is in Photoshop, you can select, um, essentially have it record your actions. So I want it to apply a sketch look, and I want it to decrease the saturation. And then you can save it as a droplet. So in doing that, what it's going to do, you can go into custom, you can select your droplet, and it's telling your system that you want it to go through these six steps every time you take a photo. So it's going to automatically create and recreate those actions that you told it to. So you would set that up here in the custom filter option. There is only one of those right now instead of all six because of the time that it's going to take. So it is using Photoshop. You need to have Photoshop on your computer um, because it is actually going to use Photoshop to create those, which is why there's only one right now because otherwise you're going to tell it to, it's going to try and use them both at the same time and it's creating issues with people for when we've tried to do more than that. Yes, Larry, you would use the Photoshop droplet file. It's essentially an executable file that Photoshop puts out telling the system, I want you to do these six actions or however many are in there. No, it's not a PNG file. It's actually an executable um, from Photoshop. So I've got a couple of examples for you here on the custom filters. So what this one is, is these are the two original photos that we were playing with. And then each of them has their own separate options. So here we used a little bit of a sketch filter. Um, and then this one we kind of got real fun with for a ghostly feel. We did a little bit of a blur, a little bit of a color adjustment. And now they're kind of ghostly looking. 
So those were two of the, the ways that we used the custom filters option within there when we were playing around. Did you guys have any other questions on the filters at all? And we're going to give everybody just a minute to type. For the custom filters, Photoshop is the only option right now. Unless somebody found something that I don't know about, which has happened before, but um, it was built with Photoshop as the only option. Nope, Lightroom is not an option. Some people I've heard have used Image Magic. Um, Yes, you would need to have Photoshop on the same computer as the Booth software, yep. Uh, Keith, I'm not sure about Photoshop elements, to be honest with you. I don't believe so, but I haven't had a ton of time to look into it. Chris just said that it says on the filter stand you can use image magic, so Mike might have thrown that in there without letting me know. Richard, for the um, for the action itself through Photoshop, is that what you're referencing? Richard, shoot me a note to support at Photo Booth Solutions and we can go through it a little bit later. I'll walk you through it. We'll also have it in one of the later trainings, too. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and move on then, and we're going to move over to Suggest a Pose Mode. So this one was built in, um, you can see it's going to randomly select the photos. So it's going to go through um, whatever photos you have in a specific folder, and it's going to get the guest to recreate it. So the original idea behind this was for the memes like you see above, um, but you could also use it for things like photos of the bride and groom. Um, so if they have engagement shots or kid pictures where they're making a, a silly face, that type of stuff. Um, for a movie premiere, you could have iconic scenes that they're that they're trying to match up to. You could also use it as a way to display different advertisers or logos on something. Um, so if you have again that like nonprofit event where you have six sponsors, this is kind of a random way to choose which which logo gets put on there. Yes, it was formerly face match. It's probably still listed as both in the actual settings. Does anybody have any questions or maybe some cool ideas of where you could use this? Larry, for the suggested pose pick, it's actually going to print right on the template with them. If you don't want that, I know some people may not, you could just layer the two photos so that your photo that you're taking is on top. It completely depends on where, where you set it up in the template. So you would set up the template as one photo, two pictures, and then wherever you place that is where it's gonna where it's gonna pop up in the template. These ones were put in as square, but you can absolutely um, adjust it to whatever you want. So again, these guys are housed in your assets folder. So if you go into the face match folder, you can see this is where we have all of the, the built-in ones. Um, but you can either just set it to go to 
a different folder or you can delete these out or change them, you know, just replace them in here. Yes, the, the picture of your guest is going to be picture one and then the picture of whatever pops up would be number two in your settings. I see a few people typing, so we're just going to give them a, a few seconds to get their questions in. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on. This one, we got really creative with the naming and it's type on photo. Um, it is exactly what it sounds like. You would set up on your template in the background that this is where I want the text to appear. You can set the font, the size, the color, the placement, all on the back end. So your guests would be able to then type in their name. They would be able to type in whatever you'd like them to. They can move the text if you want them to, or you can make it stay in one specific area. Um, one of the things that we've gotten a ton of stuff back on this one for is people using it for like a magazine layout or a baseball card. So that's kind of some of the, the fun stuff we've seen people do with this one. Um, Larry, let me go ahead and play with that a little bit. Larry said that people are having trouble with dragging the text and that it just goes into edit mode. So let me play with that a little bit and I'll get back to you. And somebody asked about how many photos you can have in the folder for the suggest a pose, and that is unlimited, however many you want. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, the last thing we had on the list for today is video host mode. So this one we set up, we've got Maxwell here that's going to walk your guests through the entire process. So he's going to tell them, hey, get ready, we're going to take four photos. Um, hang on a second, it's going to count down for them. So three, two, one, then it's going to take the picture. This is kind of cool, but there's a few things that you want to keep in mind when, you, when you're using this. One, you need your guests to be able to hear. So if you're at something like a concert venue and they're not going to be able to hear the video host, that's going to lose a little bit there. Um, there's no live view. As you can see, it takes up the whole screen. So your guests won't have the ability to kind of position themselves unless you use like a different monitor and a webcam or something like that. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is if you have autofocus on, on your camera, and it can't focus for one of the photos, it can get behind in the video. So when he's saying it's taking a photo, your camera might not be back to taking that, that next photo yet. Um, if it gets too far behind and the video ends, your photo session will not complete. So it hasn't taken those four photos, it doesn't know what to do, it's gonna give you that Adobe projector error, um, and that's gonna be that autofocus that it can't focus and it got too far behind before the video ended. We do always recommend turning off the autofocus anyway, whether you're using the video host or not. So just a heads up on that as well. Um, but some of the ideas we've had when using the video host is either just to have somebody walk it, walk it through. So if you're at something um, where it's an unmanned booth, this is a good way to make sure that the guest still understands what's going on. Um, we've had people that have used like a corporate mascot or a, a say a baseball team mascot to do the video host. Um, we had one client who used the bride and the groom where they came in and made a video um, and then they said thank you at the end to kind of build in that extra time in case the camera couldn't focus. Um, how long the video is is really dependent on how much time you want people to spend in the booth. So I think a typical session typically runs about 30 seconds for, for most people. They have that three seconds built in in between. 
So usually around 30 seconds is what people are actually in or taking their photos, you know, for that amount of time by the time they get in there, get positioned. So I would say probably around 30 to 45 seconds. But if you did want to extend it, you could absolutely do that. Does anybody have any questions about anything that we discussed today? Larry, we're going to co cover um, the surveys option in number walkthrough number two, uh, but there is a survey tab in which you, the disclaimer text option is there for you. Um, somebody asked if there can be a video to instruct guests prior to starting a session. This one, this um, video host is actually going to run through the whole se session, and it's got trigger points. So this one's made to be with, um, kind of during the session. We do have, um, kind of a screenshot, or a, sorry, a screensaver option where you could do text on the screen if you wanted to. And I can get you the name and some instructions for that in just a little bit. Yep, so again, we're going to send out, after um, the training, we're going to send out a link so you can have access to the recording and review it whenever you'd like. We had a question about overlays in the animated GIFs. Let's go ahead. We're going to go back a little bit to this one. So your actual overlay, we have a few options for the overlays. This one here, you can see the Photo Booth Solutions logo is going to be kind of your static, your regular overlay. We also have your animated overlays, which is going to be the snow in this one on the bottom right. And this one, um, it's going to be set up just like your animated backgrounds where you're going to have the individual PNG files. And then it's going to take that amount of files and plop it right on top of your uh, photos. Instagram and Snapchat do not allow for uploads outside of their uh, app. So we cannot upload to Instagram or Snapchat at this point. When designing an overlay, you're going to make it the entire 600 by 400. Yep, so give me one second. Let me get my social booth open and I can answer a few more questions that you guys have. So with Chromecast, what that's going to do is it's going to set up a slideshow of all of the photos that are in your um, event folder. So it's going to open up a Google Chrome window, and what that's going to do, you can either send that using Chromecast to anything with an HDMI, or if you're using something that's connected right away, you know, with a directly to your computer, you can just drag it over and make it full screen. Okay, so we had a question on the animated GIFs overlay. So what you're going to do is just select it right here. It's going to be that 600 by 400 file. Ours are just blank. We're kind of boring in this one. Um, but you're just going to go ahead and select that file, and that's what's going to pull it in. You can also click the box, and it'll show over the live view. So that way the people can line up properly if you want them to. For the um, video host, when you go into configure it, what you're going to do is select your video and then tell it how many cue points you've got. So if you have four photos, um, you can go ahead and let's make it three for this one, you know, whatever, how many seconds in you want it to do something and whether it's a photo or not. So you can also use it to trigger a wind machine if you wanted. Um, it doesn't have to be just taking a photo at these cue points. 
Does that help with the folks that asked how to set up the video host mode? Larry, I do have, um, we've got some more in-depth trainings coming up, and you've, um, those were in the mailer as well. We also have a part two where we're going to go over your green screen, some templates, some display stuff, um, coupon mode, that type of stuff in part two. Um, and then again, we've got that in-depth training. We also are going to do the walkthroughs about every month and a half. So that way, if you want to come back in, maybe you weren't interested in coupon mode today, but in a month and a half, you might have had somebody that was interested in something. So you might want to just come back and we get new people all the time. So we're going to have these about every month and a half. So love to see you here again if you want to come back. Chris, if you wanted to trigger a wind machine, you would hit, you would put that command in here. So it would be, um, that might have been a crappy example because you have to use kind of a fidget to get it to trigger. Um, but you would be able to put extra commands in there if you wanted to. We have just a few minutes left. Does anybody have any other questions that I can answer while I've got you? Richard, I'm 99% sure you can do the burst mode GIF as square, but let me double check for you. So for coupon mode, we're going to go more in depth in part two. But in order to set that up, what it's going to do is it's going to allow you to upload a different template than what you're printing. So you would set it up very similar to contest mode where you would create the two templates. You're going to leave this template here as the one that you want to print print. And then here in um, coupon mode, you would go ahead and turn it on and select what you want to upload. I'm sorry, this is the print template and the one in the templates tab is the upload template. So if you think of it as a physical coupon, it would be the one that prints would be the one that you're selecting here. Any other questions? Okay, great, you guys. If you do think of anything, we're always available at support at photoboothsolutions.com. I also have a little survey at the end that it's going to pop up for you, ideally. Um, so if you could fill that out for me, please be honest. I know I'm not perfect at my training, so please be honest and let me know if there's something I can prove on, if there's something you'd like to see, something you'd like to see differently. Please, please, please let me know. Oh, thank you, guys. Have a great day. I'll talk to you later. As soon as it's done rendering, I'm going to shoot the link out to everyone that attended with the um, recording. So ideally it'll be in just a little bit, but we don't really know how quick it's going to render depending on who else is using the system. <laughs>